It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The brilliant force positively Do that. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. And today's show is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace, turn your great idea into reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind with beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you do get stuck, Squarespace is 24-7 award-winning. Customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Charlemagne, let's get the show started. How are you doing? I am blessed, black, and highly favored, sir. How are you? (laughs) Same. You know what I mean? There is no race in quarantine, bro. We're all the same. We're all locked in. We can't be treated differently because we're not outside to be treated by other people. We are all the same during this quarantine. And I got to say, as a black man, it's pretty good. That is a fact. Listen, a lot of people are getting to know themselves in a way that they didn't know themselves. And I think a lot of people are realizing like they really don't do shit. Say what? A lot of people are realizing they really don't do shit. Bro, you know what I'm realizing? I am gaining weight at an exponential pace. Oh, I did it. I had to I had to do a diet. What'd you do? Because I need to do it. I got you know, Dr. Sandy has this diet and um, it's like it's 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 like she gives you this protein powder. She gives you this uh. This this white pottery stuff that you take before bed that helps to flatten your stomach. And she has these like energy boosting okay. pills, but it's really a, a diet plan. So for like three days, you got to do this detox where yeah. you only have a shake for breakfast, a shake for lunch uh, with the energy boosting pills. And then at dinner, you have like vegetables and like six, seven ounces, of, seven pounds, of, seven ounces of meat, whatever, the, whatever the fuck, not pounds, ounces of meat. And then um you do that for three days. And then for the next 30 days, you can have either egg whites for breakfast a protein shake for breakfast or um, a salad at lunch with the protein and then two snacks in between. So like protein bars. Long story short, I was 196 and I'm 182 now. Oh, and I, wow. I, I started I started last week. What? Wow. That's weight cutting for a fight, bro. 14 pounds in a week. Absolutely. But I mean, I, I've done it before. I've done her diet before. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like so you're used to it. It's kind of it's kind of easy for me, but it, it absolutely works. So I had to drop weight, too. I was 196. I was like, man, what the fuck? I can't be calling people a wide hip having hater. And then God damn all wide hipped. Yeah. You start to spread. <laughs> <laughs> you got to lean that shit the fuck out. Well, my diet, um, if you're curious, is I eat three meals a day. And then in between those meals, I usually eat a bag of dried mango from Whole Foods in between every single meal. I'm probably polishing two bags of dried mango a day. How many meals do you eat a day? Three meals a day, plus okay. dried mango, plus granola bars when I'm at the studio. Um, I haven't stopped. Me and my girl polished off an entire beef wellington. I mean, it has been, we've been eating like royalty, but at the same time, I'm gaining weight and I'm shitting nonstop. I took six shits yesterday. Wow. Yeah. My girl thought I was avoiding her. She's like, you're just going to the bathroom. Use your phone. (laughs) I'm like, I am doing that, but I'm also taking shits because we haven't stopped eating the entire time we've been in quarantine. No, that's the wildest part about quarantine, right? It's like, yo, you just can't stop fucking eating. And it's like, you're just snacking, snacking, snacking. And you know, it's, it's crazy because I know why. I think it's because on vacation, I eat like that, right? But this ain't no fucking this vacation. Not. This ain't no holiday, baby. We still in fight season. Yes, you you got to stay in shape, motherfucker. What the hell is wrong with you? Bro, I've drank every single night of quarantine. I don't even drink that much. I, I'm not I was, a drinker. I've gotten, I've had multiple drinks every single night we've been locked down. Every single one. I was doing that on weekends. But what about during the week? Not during the week. I was definitely doing it on Friday and, and really on Saturday, especially when I when when it's a beat battle on Saturday, when it's one of the verses on Saturday. Oh, you have some sips? Oh, I was there. Yeah. I was there with the fucking Hennessy VSOP, baby. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> not Remy? No, I didn't drink no Remy. You know why? Because I, I got Remy here, uh-huh. but I got so much liquor here. Um, and I was like, damn, let me open up some of these new bottles. So mm-hmm. I just happened to try Hennessy VSOP because I hate Hennessy, right? I've always hated regular Hennessy. Why? It's like a laxative to me. Okay. It makes me feel like how you felt yesterday, just shitting all the time. Oh, dude, and so I was like, fuck it. Let me try this VSOP because it's a better version. And that shit is actually really good. 
So I enjoyed it. Liquor is an interesting thing in that um, you got to drink a lot to distinguish flavor. You know what I mean? Like mm. you have to be a very, like anybody who says they can taste the difference between like Ciroc or Grey Goose or Kettle One or these things. Shut the fuck up. No, you can't. Only a oh, fat nah, you Russian can. who's like you 90 can, years you old. Can. Fam, you stop. Can. You could taste the you one can. that has pomegranate in it, but just a regular clear one. If, 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 well, that's a good point. I mean, listen, if somebody gave me three glasses of each one, I could tell that they're different. I couldn't tell you what they were, though. I couldn't say, oh, this is Ciroc. This I is bet, kettle one. I bet you couldn't tell which one was better. Like, I bet I bet you couldn't guess what was a higher quality. Oh, yeah. I feel what you're saying. Nobody, listen, nobody yeah, yeah, can. Nobody, nobody gives a fuck. I mean, like, I mean, no, I know some seasoned drinkers who can, but... The average drinker don't give a the fuck. Average, and yo, that's why it's so easy for famous people to get into the alcohol game because the alcohol all tastes the same anyway. So you might as well yeah. take your celebrity and put that celebrity on a bottle and then all of a sudden it's the bottle. That's what Diddy did with Ciroc. Yeah, yeah. Diddy really drinks it though. He might really drink it, but it don't taste no different from the last vodka he was drinking prior. People fuck with Ciroc though. You know what's so interesting about that? Uh, one of the first things Diddy did after he promoted it and like it was out for a year. I remember him, you know, letting people know that this is has been rated one of the best vodkas. And he was actually putting up charts mm. showing how Ciroc is rated better than Grey Goose or whatever the fuck it was. I don't know if that helped any, but son, it's such it's such horse shit, dude. It's like vodka is just like the diamond trade. Where it's all like, like my girl, you know, we're talking about maybe a little ring situation right now. And, okay, uh, okay. So my girl has become a diamond fucking expert in the last two weeks. I mean, she knows all the fucking things. Like now rap songs make sense to me that never made sense. Like I didn't know what like VVS was or VS. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I had no clue what the fuck Future was talking about. But now VS is like very slightly indicated yeah. So that means it's a really good diamond if it's VS. And then there's VVS, very, very slightly indicated. There's SI. Like, there's all these different things with quality of diamonds and the size of the diamond, all this other shit. And it's just like, what are we doing I thought here? a VS was a fucking car. Son, I thought it was Victoria's Secret. What the fuck is V? It's V something in a car. V. Oh, that's the, the, the cylinders. You know, Isn't the, it? You, you, a V8? You know the word? V8. V8, V8, there you go. V8, eight cylinders. You know the I worst know that, part and I got a metro like that is you have to trust your jeweler. Say again? You have to trust your jeweler. You got to put trust in your jeweler like you do your doctor or your lawyer, bro. Because I don't know anything about that shit. Salute to my guy, Mr. Flawless. Salute to my girl, Pat. They could have been getting over on me for years. You got to, you got to, <laughs> hey, hook me up. Plug me in with someone because these prices oh, flawless are Flawless the man. Crazy. Well, Flawless, holler at your boy. I'm about to go to yeah. Paul Wall for my engagement ring. Well, well, hold on. Let me say his real name. Greg Yuna. Oh, Greg. The guy who Greg does, Yuna. makes traffic. Yeah. He loves making my, some traffic. I don't know. I've never seen him do that in real life. I, I still to this day think that shit is Photoshop. I don't know how the fuck Greg pulls that shit off. <laughs> how? He's in the middle. Like you, If you see where his, 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 his business is, it's in the middle of the diamond district. Yeah. And that right there is, I think that's Fifth Avenue he'd be on. That should be busy all the fucking time. Mm. And you know what's so interesting? Mm. Greg, now that the city's closed, I ain't see you post one fucking video. Ooh. Now was the time to be getting that shit off. <laughs> Ooh. And Maybe he's banking him. Maybe he's banking like 10 for the future and they'll post them once everybody's back in motion. Yes, he might be. And, and put the and Photoshop the cars in it. Mm. Who to my guy, Greg? Unit. I, I hook you up. I tell Greg, look out for you. Oh, my girl, Pat. I got my um my, my wife's wedding ring for my, my, my girl, Pat. Pat not from here, though. Very hard. Very hard to understand. Where's I Pat forgot from? What, what, I forgot what her ethnicity is, but very hard to understand, but always treats me very right. Where's she from? I don't fucking know. She's her, her 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 building is in the diamond district. Though. Is she white? She's black? She's Asian? What is she? Nah, she's 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 pale, but I don't know what the fuck she is. She's from another country. Come on, bro. Come I really on, don't know what bro. the fuck she is. I'm being I'm honest. Not, with I'm, you. Not I'm not the feds. I'm not asking. I, for don't, you I to really don't. I'm not even joking. I really don't over know. here. Just tell me what the lady is. She's told me a million times. I want to say I, I started to say Peruvian, but that don't sound right. I need. Bro, I need a real, like, I need a diamond expert, diamond connoisseur, 
It's Pat, need, man. I need the hookup, though, man. I need the plug. I don't care if the diamond's illegal. I don't care if one of the little boys in the diamond mine snuck it out in their butthole. I don't give a fuck what it is. I just can't play, pay this market value for these types of diamonds. This is absurd. How many carrots you want? Say again? How many carrots you want? I want, and how many my girl wants are very different questions, Charlie, <laughs> man. You're asking <laughs> what does she want? Say again? What, how many carrots does she want? Too many. Mm. You know? Okay. But I get it. This is like, this is their whole, their whole life. They've been thinking about this moment. You know what I mean? Like they've been thinking about how they're going to get engaged to. And every Disney movie has been manipulating them into thinking that this is the exact moment. So it's more than just a piece of jewelry. So I understand and I empathize with them for that. But as a guy, we're not trained in any way to like enjoy or look forward to this moment. Like it's I'm not. The it's the championship, bro. What you mean? It's the championship. You got to get her a nice ring. It's the championship. This is the closest women will get to feeling like they're in the NBA finals. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this mm. is when they get that ring, man. This is like that, that Super Bowl, that MLB World Series ring. Like, you know? Yes, I know. But isn't there part of you that also goes, oh, where I could put a down payment on a house? You know, like these rings can get so expensive. We're not talking about two, three thousand dollar ring. We're talking about, you know, it's a lot of thousands of dollars. You could put that money down in the house. You could put that money in the stock market right now while it's super low. And then 10 years from now, who knows how much that's worth? Maybe your kid's college is paid for, you know? Well, don't shoot your load all at once. I mean, what I did when I was. <laughs> how do you shoot just a little of your load? <laughs> you just let a little bit of come out. Just, and then hold this. Mm, this is a little squirt. Just enough. Just enough. <laughs> You just want enough to go, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's all you want. You don't want to go to, uh, uh, you don't want to let the whole shit out just a little bit. That's why you got three girls, bro. You haven't been busting the whole load. You might be right. You got to bust the balls <laughs> and the dick in with it. You might, you might be right. That's that scared pulling out at the same time, but you just letting just enough get in. All the, all the little boys end up on the stomach. The little girls is like, ha ha, fuck you brothers. <laughs> So, but it's like, yo, back in the day, I bought, I acted my wage mm -hmm. and I bought my girl what I could afford. Right. You know and I think I spent like 10 grand uh, on a ring back in like 20, what, 13 when I got engaged. I don't remember. I think it was 2013. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah. And then what I've done over the years is I've upgraded the ring. Mm. That's all. And that's something I'm going to continue to do. I think I've upgraded it twice already. And that's just something I'll continue to do. Just continue to up, upgrade, upgrade the ring. I actually bought her a whole new ring and she wears like both of them. Hmm. Yeah. So it's just like, just continue to upgrade the diamond. That's all. Yeah. But I think that, hmm, yeah, there is that. There is that option. What do you think about like surprising them with it? I, you know, I think. You got I, to. No, no. I know you, you have to, to surprise them, but like. I'm practical about this. I know a woman wants to be completely surprised by the engagement, right? Uh -huh. But even if she says that she wants me to pick out the ring, she don't want me to pick out the fucking ring. She got to wear this for the rest of her life. All her friends going to see this shit. The ring ain't even about me. The ring is about her friends being jealous, right? About everyone in her family and her like close circle being jealous that she got the nicest ring, right? Yeah. Now, she would never say that. She might not even feel like that. But I know culturally that's what that shit is about. That's the big dick. And Does she, she have homegirls? Say what? Does she have homegirls? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, hello, uh, all Andrew's future's wife, future fiance's homegirls. Could you help the brother out? Could you, you can't DM him some trust pictures? them hating ass bitches. Yes, you no, no you, you can't. They gonna get. They gonna make you end up with some shit that she gonna hate, and then she gotta look at me and smile and be happy. You gotta go right to the source, bro. But but the, 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 she is the source. My wife has the ring she truly wants now mm. because our good friend Debbie Brown. Okay, uh, Deb. She was. She was talking to Debbie Brown mm -hmm. and telling Debbie Brown what ring she wanted. And Debbie told me, you know what I'm saying? So that's what made me go get the, 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 the when I upgraded the ring, that's the ring I got. And now she's fucking happy. Mm -hmm. Nice little pear shaped joint. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all I asked the friends. Ask the friends for help. Call a friend, bro. I don't know, bro. I don't know, man. I, for me, with these types of things, I'm like, it, you might be a little bit less happy now, but in the long term, you're going to be way happier because you're going to have that thing. 
The joy yeah, yeah, of yeah. getting engaged, I think, is only part of it. The joy of showing off that ring to your friends is the exact ring that you wanted. That's, I think, what they're most value right aesthetically about it obviously they value being with you forever and starting this family and starting this you know this marriage whatever but showing that shit off the exact thing that they want i think that's what they value and i'm like i'm not about to take that away from you by me choosing it and fucking up because i'm gonna fuck it up i'm gonna get yeah, that, a i'm lot, gonna get her a, a batman of, ring but that'd be dope I, a diamond see? Batman. see why we can't do this <laughs> You know what I mean? The prongs of the diamond Wolverine claws. Like, come the on, baby. Your Batman sick. diamond rings. You give your girl a bat signal and you come tell her, on, like, look, son. all you gotta do is flash this in the air and I'm gonna be here for you. Son, son. You can't leave it up to us, bro. That's fire. Listen, let's get into some positively brilliant and what a fucking idiot, man. Um, my first positively brilliant of the week goes to uh the celebrity in chief, uh Big Dope 45. Um Donald J. motherfucking Trump. What he do? What he do, bro? The fact that he's ordering the IRS to print his name on the stimulus checks. <laughs> Better believe it. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, man, man, listen, you better man. Better believe it. You say what the fuck you want. If you are surprised by that, then you've never had a Trump steak. <laughs> you clearly live in a city where there's no motherfucking Trump tower. Donald Trump knows that there's an election in November and he wants you to remember where that goddamn twelve hundred dollars or seven hundred dollars or five hundred dollars, whatever the fuck it is. He wants you to know where it came from. Mm -hmm. Listen, in the mail a couple of weeks ago, I got a postcard that said Donald J. Trump's tips for coronavirus prevention or some shit like that yeah. and i'm just like this is great branding dude this is great marketing this is why none of the politicians can fuck with donald trump when it comes to the headlines because they're still they're boxing against a ufc fighter mm. they're boxing trying to box and these motherfuckers kicking them in the shins put them in slamming the them hole. putting them in choke like like no let's box let's yeah. box he's like fuck all that yeah. all right you're not going to beat him at his game, bro. He is a he's 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 a DJ Khaled Diddy level brander. Bro. Brander, yeah. Now I mean that's genius, but at the same point in time it's like if I'm giving away a trillion dollars, you're going to know who gave it away. You know me, <laughs> I like my credit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not going to let some like lowly congressman take credit for you getting that money. That's coming from Schultz. Is that not wild? Come Trump on, had dude. to get all of this shit voted for. Congress had to vote for it. Uh, the Senate had to vote for it. He's like, man, fuck all that. Ain't enough room on this goddamn check for all of our names. Donald J. Trump. I'm surprised he didn't have to vote for that. Say what? I'm surprised he didn't have to vote for that. Man, man yeah, why didn't he? That is, I mean, maybe there's certain things you get to do as president. You got to have like a little, I'm going to just do this power. But I just love it. I really do love it. I think it's hilarious. The guy's hilarious. Oh, He's hilarious, but he's actually very smart. And this is, uh, I think this is Law 37 in the 48 Laws of Power. Mm -hmm. And it's just, yo, create compelling spectacles. You know what I'm saying? When you create compelling spectacles, people won't even see what the fuck it is you're really doing. Mm. Even if what you're really doing is fucking up the country. Mm. And even what you really did, they said if he would have acted two weeks faster, I think they said he would have saved like, like tens of thousands of lives. I can't remember what the exact number it was, but they had an exact number of if Trump would have just acted two days faster to this Corona shit, he, he would have fucking, it would have saved tens of thousands of lives. And, and, and I want to put this in what a fucking idiot, man. The media, bro. Haven't we only lost tens of thousands of lives? I think we only, we only lost like 20,000 lives, right? I don't know. Or maybe so, it was the number of people that got sick. I don't remember what the fuck it was. Let me look it up. People gonna get sick is about me. making sure people don't die. But yeah, if we only lost sure twenty thousand, that's literally tens of thousands. So he would we lost twenty five thousand. So if he would have saved all twenty five thousand by operating a week earlier? I don't know if he would have saved twenty five thousand. I think he'd have saved um I don't remember what the exact number was. They, they had an exact number though. Well, it doesn't matter. We're just brilliant yeah. idiots. We don't need to know yeah. the exact you facts, bro. You don't, come, you don't come to us for facts. Come on. But, uh, I want to put under what a fucking idiot the media, um, uh, especially CNN. And the reason I say that is because I was watching like you, you watch CNN, right? And MSNBC, all of the cable news networks. That's not Fox. They'll play over and over Donald, Tr Donald Trump saying how he never said it was a hoax, mm -hmm. how he never said not to take this shit serious. They'll play that clip over and over and over. And then after they play it, the anchors will come back and be like, but he lied. Now, average person 
watching TV, who you think they're paying attention to? This clip, this loop being played over and over saying, I never said it was a hoax. I never said it was a pandemic. Or the fucking anchor saying, and he lied. <laughs> what they should be doing is playing the actual clip of him saying, oh, it's a hoax. We got it all under control. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a democratic hoax. Play that over and over and over and over so people constantly see that. Because I watched CNN the other day, and for two seconds, I was like, well, he never said it was a hoax. Uh. <laughs> because they keep playing the loop over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And I think I got a little bit of sense. I'm not the highest grade of weed in the dispensary. But if that shit had that type, type of impact on me, imagine what type of impact it has on just a regular average person who might just be flipping channels or decides to tune into CNN for a motherfucking second. You don't know what to believe. So if you want to push a certain message, you want to push a, a certain uh, narrative about Donald J. Trump, and, and, and it's not even a narrative, it's the truth, that he absolutely said this shit was a hoax, just keep playing that over and over and over and over again. Right. You, by the way, you don't even have to repeat it. Because even when it comes out your mouth, it sounds like you're lying on the president. It sounds like you're lying on him because he's your opposition. Just use the clip of him saying it over and over and over. That's the only thing you should be running. That's it. And why do you think they don't do that? Bro, I really don't know. That's why I have them in the what a fucking idiot segment. <laughs> like, like, like I wouldn't even I wouldn't even show the contrast if I was them. If I was them, I wouldn't even show him saying he never said it and then him saying it. I would just constantly keep playing. It's a Democratic hoax. hoax. We got it all under control. That's it. That's all I would play over and over and fuck over the fuck again. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a tricky. It's a tricky fucking thing, man. Um, it's really not. This shit really isn't that difficult shows. What do you if mean? You turn on CNN right now. Yeah. Like 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 all you would see. This can go into what a fucking idiot, too. If you turn on CNN right now, all you see is Chris Cuomo and Donald Trump. You know what Joe Biden did this week? Pissed himself. <laughs> 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 he, he put out a great op-ed right. in the New York Times about uh, how to properly reopen the country after after you know during after this Corona shit. Yeah, he uh, got endorsed by Bernie Sanders. He Dude, got uh, endorsed by President Barack Obama. Bernie Sanders is huh? What an absolute coward! He got endorsed by President Barack Obama. Finally, the Black Panther came to speak up for Hawkeye, and he got endorsed by Elizabeth Warren. Now, but guess when what? You, when you get endorsed, does that mean all the money that you raised goes to them? That's a good question. I don't know. Is that what the endorsement is? Nah, I think the endorsement is for uh, people who are uninspired by a candidate like I am when it comes to Joe Biden. It's for mm -hmm. people like me, because if a guy like, uh, you know, if, if Barack Obama, who I, I respect and, and appreciate, if he says Biden is the guy, even if I don't believe Biden is the guy, maybe I believe Barack when he tells me that Biden is the guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess I'm just so let down by Bernie Sanders, man. I, I voted for him before. I was going to vote for him again. I really fucking supported him. I loved him. I thought that he was a truly like brave guy that had our best intentions at heart. And now I just think that he's just like a disruptor. He doesn't really care about getting anything done. Like when you literally walk the people remember when Martin Luther King was like, I feel like I'm walking my people into a burning house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you do that. When you walk your people into the burning house, like when you when you can't even call out the corruption, you can't even call out the fuck shit. Like I don't even know what his goal is. Like go be a teacher at some fucking liberal arts college, coward. Yeah, this shit really pissed me off, dude. Like call out the fuck shit. Yeah, just not, call it out. Didn't. You know you've been in politics. You know the same people that will prop up Donald Trump will prop up Joe Biden. It's the same people. These people are yeah. not different. It's the yeah. same banks that are gonna prop them both up. It's the same rich folks that are going to prop them both up. It's the same people that are going to make money off of Trump and make money off of Biden. No different. Yeah, Bernie didn't even hold his nuts enough to say, motherfuckers, I was right. Because everything they're doing now is straight Bernie. Like, this is what Bernie been telling y'all needs to be done. You know, all of this, all of this time when they was telling Bernie, they tell us, oh, you can't get the money to do what it is Bernie wants to do. Shit. They scraped up two trillion from somewhere. Out of nowhere, huh? You know what I mean? So it's just like Bernie is fucking right. Like who right now in America, after looking at the way our health care is being hit, wouldn't say all Americans need free fucking health care. 
I'm just saying you know now saying? is the time to grab your fucking balls and go, right? Now, now is the time, time to, to say, grab I told your fucking you balls so. and be like, I tried to tell you, motherfucker. And Van Jones was on Breakfast Club and Van Jones said, right now, Bernie Sanders looks like the smartest person in American politics. But I got a problem with the media, the liberal media, because they didn't say that when Bernie was fucking running. When Bernie was in the primaries, if they were saying shit like that, they probably could have swayed some motherfuckers in the goal but voting they, for Bernie. They know where their bread is buttered. They're going to do yeah, what daddy man. tells them what the fuck to do. You know, yeah, same man. companies making money off of Biden being president are the people that are manipulating CNN and their journalists to say whatever the fuck they want. There's a reason why everyone on CNN has the same opinion. Like, that's not shocking. The same thing with Fox. There's a reason why they all have the same opinion, right? <laughs> it's not yeah. like they hired people who all think the same. It's in order to work here, you have to think like this. And if you don't, you're either fired or we tell you to think like this. Yeah, I mean, that's why when certain people get on... um you know, CNN or MSNBC, they cut through because, you know, you hear certain rhetoric and you're like, oh, that sounds refreshing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I never heard that type of truth before. Like uh, I want to uh, I put under what a fucking idiot. Um, Nina Turner, who descended to Nina Turner. Nina Turner has been a surrogate for Bernie Sanders for a long time. Uh, she used to ride with Hillary, but then she left Hillary to get with Bernie. And, um, you know, back in 2016, they screwed her over at the DNC convention. You know, I think she was supposed to speak at the Democratic National Convention and at the last minute they pulled her and um, never gave no explanation as to why they pulled her. And Bernie Sanders didn't you know, stick up for her then or come to her defense. And you know, this go around, you know, she was out there stomping for Bernie again. And um, you know, Bernie endorsed Biden this week. And, you know, if you if you heard what Bernie and Biden are going to do, they're, they're starting these task forces with all of these different task forces. I think it's like six different task forces, one for the economy, one for climate change, I just education, just different things. And so we had to turn on the breakfast club. And I was just like, yo, I, I, what, what task force are you going to be on? Because that's just a logical no brainer, right? Because Bernie defers to Nina, you know, mentions her when he's doing his when he's on the debate stage. Like, you know, he, like I'm just thinking like Nina's his his people. She's like, they don't want me on the task force. He told me verbatim. They don't want me on any of the task force. And I'm like, why? And she's like, because I wrote an op ed about Joe Biden. Know, uh, earlier this year and just telling the truth about Joe Biden, you know, and I'm sure that when she wrote that op-ed, that op-ed got approved by Senator Sanders. So it's just like, yo, when you are on the campaign trail and you being the goon for somebody and doing a dirt, it's all good. And but then, now that you are endorsing Joe Biden and you putting together these task force, why wouldn't you get a truth teller, somebody who speaks truth to power, somebody that black people actually trust? Why wouldn't you get her and put her on your team? I he look that care. shit make me look at Bernie crazy and look at Joe crazy. He don't care. He don't fucking care. He never wants to win. He just wants to rile shit up. It just mm. it makes it makes it's really just disappointing. It makes no sense whatsoever. And that's not how you make change. Change comes oh. by fucking force, man. Yep. You know what I mean? You can't wag your finger and then change happens. Change nope. takes radical movement and radical points of view and then radical action that's the only way change happens you can't just go eight years in a row and expect something to happen it's not gonna fucking happen only time change comes with your fingers is if you got the fucking infinity gauntlet in your thanos <laughs> you can just snap that shit i had uh, um, also uh, I, this is my uh, last political thing after uh, positively brilliant i gotta give it to aoc bro what does she do aoc is like I'm not endorsing Joe Biden. What she said? She said, I'm not endorsing Joe Biden. She said, it's very important to support the Democratic nominee, but I'm not endorsing Joe Biden until we sit down and talk about some motherfucking policies for me and my goddamn people, meaning progressives and Latinos. I fucking respect it. You know why? Because you niggas are so quick to give up the ass without letting the motherfucker court you first. Y'all don't even want no goddamn date. Y'all don't even want your pussies ate. Y'all don't want nothing. Y'all just like, here, fuck me. Dry. No condom. Don't even spit on the dick. Just stick it in. That's what y'all be letting these motherfucking Democrats do to y'all. AOC like, no, 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 no. You're going to court me, motherfucker. You're going to take me out. You're going to take me to dinner. Okay, I want me a fucking diamond. I want I want a V V V V V V S. <laughs> All right? <laughs> I want some shit. And that's the way your vote should fucking work. Period. Nothing That's, more, nothing less. Yeah, no, no. I, I, then I have to apologize to AOC because I thought that she was just towing a company line. I thought she was really quiet during this time. The fact that she came out and said that, hey, more power to you. 
more yeah. power fucking to you. Good for you. That is how you get shit done. That is how you yes. use your leverage. You have your most leverage right now. Like Joe Bernie Sanders had his most leverage in this moment. Get some promises from Joe Biden. That's it. Don't just go out there, hop on Cardi B's Instagram and go, you should vote for him. Why? Why? Why, motherfucker? Why? Why? What do they have on you? Guess guess what? Uh, Anybody but Trump ain't enough for me. Because guess what? They put us in that position every fucking election. Every election is a boogeyman. Every every election is a... Bush, Trump. Yep. Uh, Every election. McCain. McCain. Romney. But then when these fought, when these people aren't in the goddamn White House anymore, all of a sudden they're they're, they're charming characters. They're so charming. Look how fun John they McCain are. is the maverick. He is the ma- and and Mitt Romney cares about the people. He balanced yes. the budget. He balanced health care for Massachusetts. And George Bush is and is such good friends with Michelle Obama. I remember when Dave was calling George Bush the Antichrist. George Bush don't care about black people. Don't care about black people. Ten years later, there he's exchanging fucking sweets with Michelle Obama at every public <laughs> gathering there is. That's what I'm saying, man. So it's just like every year they do this to us. They scare. They try to use scare tactics in order to make us just hand over our votes for nothing. And that shit has to fucking stop. And the only way it will stop, the only way it will stop is if you stop calling people who defect coons, Uncle Tom, sellouts, yes. etc. It don't yes. matter what. Like if somebody says, if if Kanye goes, I'm voting for Donald Trump, and you ask him why, and he goes, I'm doing it because I hate black people. Then you call him a sellout. You call him a coon. You call him Uncle Tom. If he goes, I'm doing it because I the most important issue for me right now is prison reform. And I like his prison reform policy more than I like Biden's. You can't yeah. really call him a sellout, B. He's voting his interests. He, but he, his interests are actually selfless, right? Because he's trying to get black people out of jail. So yeah, it's like yeah. before you throw that fucking term out and you know who put that term in your head. They put that term in your head. They're giving you the ammunition. They're the ones right. telling you what to say to these people. Of That's course, right. it's like this is so easy to manipulate, man. My 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 ass from Joe Biden is quite simple. I want him to have a a, a black woman running mate for, for VP. I want him. He said he already said he's going to put a black woman on the Supreme Court, and I want him to have an economic black agenda, and I want him to create uh some type of criminal justice reform plan that basically counters you know all the damage he did with the ninety four crime bill. Man, that's good. You know exactly what you want, and you it ain't want, hard. And it, they, if he delivers, then you vote for him. It's very simple. Like this is how shit should work. And I think it's very stupid. That's why I put them under what a fucking idiot. It's very stupid with the Nina Turner shit because it's like, yo, you can't even front like you down with some progressives. Like even if you just put her on the task force to keep up appearances, you know what I'm saying? Just to say, like, hey, we got Nina Turner down with us. Like, just you, you don't even know how to front. Yep. What the fuck, yeah. Joe Biden? Jesus. Matter of fact, Joe, text Barack Obama and say, what is fronting me? <laughs> or turn, turn to Simone Sanders and say, what is fronting me? Ask the black people in your circle what is fronting me because you need to learn how to goddamn do it. But hey, man, when you're 78 years old, you're a 78 year old anything. I don't give you an old white man, old black man. You ain't got time for fronting. Mm-mm. You putting that wrinkled dick on the table, nigga, and letting people know what the fuck it is at all times. I'm serious. I can't wait to get to that age. You think I'm going to bite my tongue at 78? You think I'm going to change my Son, fucking stripes at 78? That's why Bernie's such a pussy. You're going to die. You might as well just call it out. You're dead in a few years. What do you got to lose? This is your one life. You spent your entire life fighting for this one idea. Bernie, I'm talking about. Or not one idea, but for this group of ideas. And now you are this close Right? You weren't willing to lay it all on the line, bro. You weren't to give it up. Go in there and start swinging. It's the 12th round of your life, and you have the opportunity to potentially be president, and you weren't willing to leave it all in the ring? I can't. You, you're not, you cow, you're a coward, bro. You're a fucking coward. I, I agree with you. Let me play white devil's advocate a Please little bit. Please do. Um, what if I'm Bernie Sanders, and like you said, I'm in the, 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 the last days of my life, right? Mm-hmm. What if... I know I can't win the presidency, but this is my opportunity to actually be in the White House and to impact some type of meaningful change. I may not be the I may not be the guy, but I can influence the guy in a real way. What if he's looking at it from that perspective? He's been in politics for 300 years. Okay, He hasn't been able to influence shit. Why does he think all of a sudden he's going to be able to? I agree. I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe just because now the 
of the of the power that he's garnered over the past four or five years by building the. But he hands over the power, bro. It's like what you were saying. It's like you could have all this influence in the world, right? A, a group of people could have all this influence in the world, but if you're not willing to listen to people's offers, you have no influence. If you're yeah, selling yeah, yeah. a house, right? And you're going, I'm only going to sell the house to that guy. Whatever that guy offers you is what you're getting. But if you're going, I'm willing to sell the house to anybody. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. All of a sudden, those people are going to compete for what the for what uh, offer they would give you. And the highest offer is the one you're going to get. Let motherfuckers compete. Absolutely. It's just I dry. agree. It's I dry. agree. And, and, and one, and one, uh, one last part. Well, positively brilliant. I got to salute Governor Cuomo. He's on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine with the headline. Governor Cuomo takes charge. I told y'all three, four weeks ago, whenever the fuck this shit first started, I told y'all the fact that Joe Biden wasn't doing any daily counter programming to Donald Trump, it really hurt him. And I understand that Governor Cuomo was a governor and, you know, he was going to do daily briefings anyway, but that actually turned into comfort for the whole nation. Yeah. And because of him doing that shit, being doing his daily briefings and then going on with his brother on CNN at night and laughing and joking and just being a regular person and talking to people about their families and what you can be doing during this time to get through this quarantine. That shit made him a national star. Mm. And, 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 and the time to look like a leader is in a crisis. Crisis reveals character, mm. period. And his character looks like that of a leader. Joe Biden went to radio silent mm. over, the, over, over that period of time when everybody was you know, uh, turning on the TV every day to, to listen to Donald Trump, you know, and that's yep. why at that, for that moment, Donald Trump's approval rating shot up for the moment. Donald Trump's approval rating when it came to how he was handling the coronavirus shit shot up. I mean, it's gone down since. But I'm talking about in that moment, that shit worked for him mm-hmm. and it definitely worked for Governor Cuomo. And, and, and one of my partners, man, salute to my guy, Tommy. He was like, you think Joe Biden's not going to end up getting the cover of Rolling Stone? Let me put this in a little perspective for you. When Barack Obama ran for president in 2008, he got the cover of Rolling Stone twice that year. He got it in March of 2008. And then again, I believe in October, our, 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 our November issue was right before the election. Everything fucking helps. Mm. Everything. Cuomo on the front of Rolling Stone, Donald Trump on your goddamn stimulus check. Mm. <laughs> your name brand recognition helps. You want to be top of the mind awareness come November. Mm. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if in November people went into the fucking booth and wrote Governor Cuomo's name in. Yeah, they might. I would not be surprised by that at all. I would not be surprised if we sitting around on election night and Donald Trump wins. Joe, you look at Joe Biden's numbers and then you see some silly shit like eight percent of the country voted for fucking <laughs> wrote in Governor Cuomo. Oh, that shit would not shock me at all. yo. And guess what? You have nobody to blame but your fucking self, Joseph yeah. Biden. Yeah. Yeah, it is a weird thing, man. It shows you how biased we we fucking are, man. It's uh I was saying for um what a fucking idiot. I wanted to say uh all the uh people that were have been promoting uh body positivity for fat people, right? So they what do you ju- mean? <laughs> they're all what they're all fucking idiots. Um because they just they just put out I think it was the New York Times just put out. I want to make sure I get it right. Oh, I saw that. I know you're going. Where am I going? Fat people die of Corona more. Where am I going, bro? I think I read an article that says fat people die. Fat people are more likely to die of Corona than anything else. It's fat people and old people. Those are the two leading causes of Corona death. If you're fat or if you're old. So I want to see all these body positivity. People keep that same fucking energy, yo. Keep that same energy. It's such hypocrisy, man. It's, it's hypocrisy because, you know, you do want to protect people. See, here's the thing. You're, you're, you're simultaneously trying to protect somebody's mental and emotional health, right? Mm-hmm. But then what you're also doing is hurting them physically. Killing because them. Because the truth. You're, literally, you're killing them. It used to be yeah. hurting. Now you're killing. New York NYU scientist, largest U.S. study of COVID-19 finds obesity the single biggest chronic factor in New York City's hospitalizations. That's the single biggest chronic factor in New York City's hospitalizations. Being fat is going to kill you now. So anybody tells you, love your body, love yourself, they're trying to kill you. That that should be manslaughter. All these chicks are on Instagram and Twitter talking about, I'm big and I'm beautiful, you big and you dead. That's what you big I agree with you. It's a a balancing act though, right? 
They can't you want- balance. <laughs> <laughs> you want brothers and sisters to lose weight, right? Yeah. So you got this elephant on a tightrope. So you got to walk a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. balance, right? So you got this elephant on the tightrope because you want them to lose weight, but you don't want to ruin their self-esteem. Right. You don't want to fuck them up mentally. You don't want to fuck them up emotionally. You want them to still be mentally healthy and emotionally healthy. But it's a, it's, it's a fine line of uh, being able to tell them that they need to lose weight, but also keeping their self-esteem up. And I think the way to do it is through the Yo, I love you and I want you to be here. You're going to die. Stop you don't look bad. Yourself. You don't look bad, but you're going to die. Yo, you look bad and you're going to die. <laughs> okay? You're going to look horrible when you're dead. <laughs> it's your I am ass. not carrying your casket. It's going to take eight ball bearers. You don't have eight friends. <laughs> and especially right now, if you die right now, okay, you can only have 10 people at your funeral. Who's going to carry your fucking casket? <laughs> yo, we're going to have okay? to cremate you, yo. We're going to have to cremate you if we're going to get you to the wedding. We're not carrying that fucking thing. Uh, fuck the cremation. We got to barbecue you. Goddamn. We're talking about the food shortage. We're like, we're gonna to, I'm sorry. We might have to turn into cannibal soon. God damn it. Don't let all this good carcass go to waste. Fuck a funeral. We're going to have a luau. <laughs> <laughs> Son, that shit was killing me, bro. Because this is what happens. When it, when it gets real, you see what's going on. When everybody's yes. doing okay, you can make this stupid bullshit up like we're big and beautiful or whatever this kind of shit. But when shit hits the fan, when life hits you fast, the reality comes out. Start being healthy. Because here's the well, thing. Listen, words matter. Say what? I think you, words matter. I think you can be big and beautiful, but can you be big and healthy is the question. Yeah, it, it, it. You can be big and beautiful. Can big you? Big and healthy. Can you? Yeah, there's plenty of big, big, beautiful women. Let's just let's define and, and big, big and beautiful. And First of all, let's define big and beautiful. Okay, here. Let's just define it, what we're talking about. I'm not talking about a little fat. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about someone who's a little bit overweight. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who are fucking obese. There's a yeah, big yeah, difference yeah. here. When there are people yeah. who are obese, that's what we're talking about. Everybody's got a little fat on that. It's like, what, are you going to have a six-pack your entire life? It's unrealistic. It's stupid. Matter of fact, so you, it, mean, so you mean somewhere between like, like Lizzo's big and beautiful to me. So somebody but like, so no, you mean that's anywhere it. between that's it. Right Lizzo? There. Lizzo's a good no, no number. We could start at Lizzo. So Lizzo, between Lizzo and my 600 pound life. Your 600 pound life is so it's fucking in the, It's absurd. in there somewhere. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. hundred okay. percent. Yeah. It's just bad. It's unhealthy. That's what I'm saying. You have the, you have the ability to do whatever you want with your life. You have the ability to do whatever you want with your life. I'm not going to tell you not to be fat. That's up to you. What I will do is push back against anybody that enables that. Right? Because if drug dealers are bad because they enable drug use, then body positivity people are bad because they enable your death via eating. I I no, I think we got to be careful with the wording shows because I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with body positivity because you're just telling people to love their body. But you want people to lose weight. You could you shouldn't you love all your body, though. If sometimes you have too much body to love. That's what I'm, no, that's what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying. You, yeah, yeah. You, you can't properly love your body if you weigh 400 something pounds and now you're going talking. to the hospital and the doctor's telling you like, yo, you're unhealthy. Now there's nothing talking. there's nothing to you, you don't love your body when you're doing that to your body there you know we, what i'm saying so you want people go. to be healthy healthy that's what lose i lose weight by the way don't don't wait until your doctor tells us what we're, we're telling you now the doctors, that's what people do the doctors they wait they, 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 they wait till the doctor tells them they're about to die and then they want to change some shit yeah we're just getting ahead of it that's we're trying to flatten the curve that is your stomach. That's there what we're trying go. to do. Okay? <laughs> we're just trying to flatten your curves. That's what we want you to social distance away from the from fucking refrigerator. <laughs> That's it. Is that too fucking hard? We, we don't want... have a vaccine for your fat yet. So what we need you to do. Caloric distancing. That's, That's it. it. Caloric distancing, baby. Come on. <laughs> Come on, come on. We we trying to help you. Now is a terrible time to die. I'm telling you. Mm. I, I saw it. It's only 10 people allowed at funerals. That's if right. You weigh 300, if you weigh 300, 400 pounds, it's going to take a list. 
at least six people to carry your casket. It's a lot, dude. It's That's a, a lot, lot man. of people. We're gonna bro. have to slide that downhill. <laughs> we got we wheels on it. Jamaican bobsled you on that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put some wheels on that fucking casket. Uh, what a fucking idiot, Dak and Zeke too, man. Who is that? Dak and Zeke. Oh, with their party. Yeah, I didn't yeah, like. Yeah, go on. I didn't that. like Dak's answer. I didn't like Dak's answer. What was Dak, his answer? He basically said like he only had like nine people. Bro, that's too much. Well, the rule I think is ten. That's too much. Nah. Ten's I'm, too much. I'm bro. gonna give you some pushback. I think we gotta stop it with all this. Talk to me. I'm done. Nah. I'm done. Agree. We gotta hang out now, yo. I we gotta hang out. We gotta go outside. I'm done. I'm no. done with all this stay inside nope. shit, fam. No. Nope. I'm done. Nope. I'm done. If you I'm fat you or you old, you stay inside. Everybody else, we out. Can we do a deep dive on how vengeful Corona is? Talk to me. You talking about credit? Don't nobody want their credit like that bitch named Rona, bro. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't even mean to call you a bitch. I, I apologize, bro. <laughs> Talk to me. Every single person I've seen question Rona, uh-huh. Rona has shown them. There's this bishop. I forgot where the bishop's from. I think it's Virginia. Oh, yeah. Bishop was like, look, God can protect you from the corona. God is bigger than corona. He died of corona. You know what I'm saying? After having services, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Rudy Gobert. Utah Jazz, ah, ha, 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 touching everything. He got that Corona. Yeah. Corona going to make y'all believe, bro, bro. Oh, I <laughs> believe in it. I'm, I, okay. I don't think it doesn't exist. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I've had enough. Well, she hasn't. We're going outside, bro. We're going to go outside. We're going to hang out outside. We're going to take a I think that's coming walk. soon, though. We, it's, I have a feeling it's taking too long, and we need to get back to it. Now, I'm not saying that we should um, play pickup basketball games, okay? But you should be able to take a walk. Go take a walk with your girlfriend. Hang out in a the park. These Not things yet. should be okay. I think America, they did great. Social distancing clearly worked. You look in New York City. You know, uh, last week they said the curve was starting to flatten. They didn't know if it was just a blip or if it was a real plateau. But now this week, uh, Cuomo is saying he thinks the worst is behind us. That shows social distancing fucking works. So you know why what? stop that now? That's true. Or what it shows is politicians have self-interest in this thing as well. So what they do is they exaggerate how bad it's going to be so that when it doesn't end up being that bad, they get to say, well, you know what I did? I protected us all from Corona with my policies to minimize uh, contact and, and increase social distancing so most people didn't die. So you don't think Corona was ever as bad as they was making it out to be? No, I'm not saying that. I think Corona right. is something dangerous, but I'm saying they have a personal interest in making it seem even worse so that when it isn't, they can look like they saved the day. I think you have to scare the fuck out of people just to make people do what it is you want them to do to begin with. Yeah. I can't be nice to you and tell you, hey, man, I really need you to stay home. Flatten this curve called Corona. I got to tell you that, look, if you don't fucking stay in this fucking house, you're going to fucking die. Your kids are going to die. Your grandma's going to die. Yo, they really play. They pull at our heartstrings because think about it. The first people they told. Look at your phone. Who's on your phone right now? My dad. How old is your dad? 77 or something. Exactly. So when they put that in your head that something could happen to him, mm -hmm. you're going to do the right fucking thing. Exactly. 100 percent. And my dad. So that's what they did. My dad should stay his ass home. <laughs> but you out there. I'm out here, baby. But you can't be out there and then go around your father. I go. When I say hi to my folks, we stay six feet away. We oh, literally take ooh. walks together six feet away. We don't hug. It's the hardest thing to be like next to your fucking parents. And you can't even hello, say hello and like hug them, give them a kiss or any of that kind of shit. But that's what we do. They wear gloves, yeah, all that shit. I know I'm a fucking maniac because I, I feel so good. I've been feeling so good the past few weeks. I'm talking about like I've been what? laying in the bed and that shit feel like I'm on ecstasy. Why? What do you mean? Because I have had a sense of calm the past few weeks that uh, I haven't felt in a while. And it's good for me because it really lets me know what the source of my anxiety is. The source of my anxiety comes from two things. Other people and stressing about my family. Mm. Like I have parental paranoia in a real way. I wrote about it in you know, Shook Ones. And I got a whole chapter about parental paranoia, but it's true. Like when you're worried about your kids being at school, you're worried about 
you know, your wife out and about throughout the day, you know, having to pick the kids up and things of that nature. Like those are the things that really caused me to get anxiety. Those are the things that caused me to have palpitations. You'd be sitting around thinking about school shooting to your your kids getting into it with some kid at school. All types of shit just go through your head when you got to deal with that. Past few weeks, I know where everybody at. Mm. The kids is right here in the house. Nobody got to go no fucking place. I haven't. I've been sleeping great. Okay, we are. Just, I, this is great for me. I know it sucks for everybody else. I know everybody in my else in my house absolutely hates it. I know my daughter wants to be at school. I know she wants to go to cheerleading practice. For me, I haven't felt a lick. When I showed, when I tell you a lick of anxiety, I haven't felt a piece of anxiety the past four weeks. So maybe that's what you got to do, man. Stay home, homeschool the kids. I'm a homebody. I'm a cancer. So yeah, there is something to that. There absolutely is something to that. But I, I mean, also, you know, leaning into the uncertainty of the whole situation, right? right. Because this shit is out of our control, Schultz. Yeah, it's out of our control. It is. That There's being, nothing we can do. Yeah, we can. We can just start going out again. But then the fucking shit will probably flare back up. Just don't be around people. Impossible. Son, you live in New York. It, I can be not around people. First of all, no one's in New York. You see how few people really live in Manhattan Like when this happens? Because I'm in Manhattan. I'm born and raised in Manhattan. Nobody's in Manhattan. You don't see nobody on the street. And they're not all inside. It's that all the people from Manhattan went back to their parents' house or went to their house on a fucking island or went to their beach house somewhere. All these rich people, they're like, oh, yeah, we're New Yorkers. We got this shit. They fucking got out of the city as soon as they possibly could. I'm not talking about the boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, et cetera. Those people live there. But all these people that like claim New York so hard, they got the fuck out of New York City as quick as they could, man. And soon as you open this shit back up, that shit is going to flood again. And, and What if we what socially you, distance? Does that shit not to. work, yo? By the does way, that that's the new not work, norm. Yo? You say what? I don't understand why why they keep talking about it. like does it work or does it not work? I, nothing oh, no. that they that, say he, makes any fucking sense, bro. This shit is driving me crazy. Do you hear what they were saying? Where they were like Fauci was like, we're not gonna be able to shake hands again. You saw that? Yeah. Well, I, I think he said until like twenty twenty two or some shit like son, that. Son, son, what do you want us to do? You want us to bow? Did that work for the fucking Chinese? Do you forget where this shit came from? Shaking hands is not the thing that's going to spread the virus. Yeah. You know, a doctor told me this morning, I can't remember the doctor's name. We had him on breakfast club. He said not to wear gloves. He said gloves are the worst. He said, not, he said, he said, them rubber gloves, the virus sticks to that shit like glue. So here's he the said, thing. Just, he said, just wash your hands and use Perel. Here's the thing about the rubber gloves. This is the reason I use the rubber gloves. Because if I'm wearing gloves, I won't touch my face. If I'm not wearing gloves, I'm touching my face nonstop. That's all I do is touch my fucking face. I'm biting yeah, yeah, my yeah, fingernails. I'm doing all that shit. So the gloves are just about me not putting my hands that have probably touched something on my face. Well, I hope all of y'all know that uh, this is the new normal. Once this shit does open back up, it's going to be mask and fucking gloves all day, every day. Hand sanitizer is going to be like the new breath mints. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to have them shit on you. Yeah. Motherfuckers going to have hand sanitizer. Motherfuckers going to treat bottles of hand sanitizer like they treat their phones. Really? They're like, what the, what the fuck is my hand sanitizer? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, like that shit... That hand sanitizer is going to be like the new fucking smartphone mm. and people going to have to wear masks everywhere they go. This is the new fucking normal once shit opens back up, baby. I got I'm a positively you. brilliant, bro. Talk to me. Bill Maher. Bill Maher put out a piece about... Uh, oh, the, I saw that. The, the calling it the Chinese uh, virus. Yeah, I saw that. Or whatever like that. It was absolutely brilliant. About, you know, people in America, of course, you're still offended. Even during a fucking global pandemic, you find a way to be offended by absolutely nothing. And they think that calling it a Chinese virus is somewhat offensive or racist. And he basically goes through every virus that we've ever had and shows how you just name them after the places where they were found. This Lyme is disease is from West Lyme, Connecticut. Zika is from the Zika River in the Congo region. Ebola is from the Ebola, whatever, like the Spanish flu. Uh, what is it called? MERS, oh. Middle Eastern Respiratory Sickness. Like he literally calls out every single one and why it's named that way and stop finding a way to be fucking pussies about absolutely everything. You know, Charlemagne the God, Leonard McKelvey. Said that on this fucking podcast like six weeks ago. Son, we were saying it. You, We've been saying you know, it. I, I, I've been saying it on Breakfast Club for six fucking weeks. And I, I use three examples. I used Ebola, uh, Zika, and um, uh, West Nile. 
Yes. Because th- those are all places in Africa. And I mean, no disrespect to the, to the Asians, but even if it is called Chinese flu, um, I don't understand why it gets called racist when, when, when it's Chinese flu, but when it comes to diseases from Africa, nobody says anything. And that's why I got to hurry up and get my fucking talk show. Son, you got to do it, talk, man. I'm that's t- what this boils down to. It's, I watched it's that Bill Maher shit and I was like, I watched that Bill Maher and I said, I had that thought six weeks ago. I, Son, I, I expressed that on the radio and on the podcast six weeks ago. That's Listen, platforms matter, bro. And he platforms also did matter. it in a beautiful, concise way. And he had all the great arguments backing it up. And I just don't understand. It's like, why are people getting so upset? Like, do you think gay people back in the day in the 80s would be upset if they called AIDS gay flu? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? They were. <laughs> Absolutely. Nah, but when it was just. <laughs> not only, not only it, would they be, they were. But when <laughs> it was just targeting them, you don't yes, think you could when, be like, Yo, you just, me, hey, don't get sneezed on. You could get some gay flu. <laughs> they hated when they used to re- when people used to refer to HIV and AIDS as a gay disease. They still hate it now. But yes. back in the day, that shit was predominantly gay flu. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. Well, it used to be the Wuhan. It used to be the Chinese flu, and then it spread around the world. Same thing with AIDS. I think it was predominantly gay flu, and then it became everybody's flu. Nah. Gay flu is, is horrible because, and also, gay flu is show, is saying that only gay people can get it. No, it's not. It's true. saying that's where it started. But it didn't start with gay people. That's where it. That's where. It, that's where it got popping. Maybe it didn't start there, but that's where I mean, it got popping. I don't know. No, that ain't true. That's where it got popping. Like I don't think Jamaicans were the first people to have dreadlocks, but that's where it got popping. But you don't call it goddamn Jamaican locks. Some people might. You dread, don't call it a Jamaican perm. Not be a dreadlock. You don't say I want a Jamaican perm. You know hey, dude, that could work. If someone said that, I would believe it. No, if but someone I, said, give I, me I mean, some Jamaican locks, I would know what they are. I I'm totally saying, get it when it, HIV AIDS is actually a great example because, um, you know, if you was to call it something like gay flu, it's actually not only putting a stigma on, on gay people, but it's also putting uh, a negative narrative on what HIV AIDS is because that's a myth that you, that only gay people can get it. We're just saying like where it started from. Like, that's why I don't understand. I don't know if it started there. You have to, go, you have to prove this one. Well, look, here's the thing. Spanish flu, you know the Spanish flu? The Spanish yes. flu epidemic, I think it happened like 1917. Apparently that didn't start in Spain. It probably started from in the wet markets in China, but all the other countries- He's just blaming everything on China. Son, it, it, listen, start fucking closing the wet markets. It's not that hard. Just shut they it do down. You need to close the wet you markets. You shouldn't be able to sell a pterodactyl on the street. And that's what they're fucking doing. They'll sell anything on the street there. And if that's what's causing the viruses, what? You're not gonna sit here and tell me you wouldn't try pterodactyl wings. Son, I'm not saying I wouldn't try Don't fucking lie to me. Bro, I'm not saying I wouldn't try it, but oh. find a better way to sell it, B. That's that shit sounds trying. tasty. Pterodactyl wings? <laughs> he, he like a Flintstone. <laughs> let me put some lemon pepper on them shit. Let's go. Now, what are the best terms you've heard for the coronavirus? Uh, I like the Rona. What about she... what about I've <laughs> not heard that one. <laughs> You just made that one. Up. <laughs> I have that one. I have not heard. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> tell, tell, Whoa! Tell me that. Tell me. <laughs> tell me that. Hey, that me, me. Uh, I need. A, I need an Asian referee, Chris. <laughs> Chris, j- jump in here real quick, Chris. Chris. No, no, thank you. No. Let me ask you a question. Is that offensive? Chris, yes, it, goodbye. Calling it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That's offensive. Kung, what about Kung Flu? I heard that. That's a, Kung yeah, I heard Flu. That one. I heard that one. Okay. What about um, Chopsick? That one I have not heard. <laughs> that one I have not heard. Jesus <laughs> Christ. What about the Wuhanic plague? I haven't heard that one. That's not a bad one, though. Wuhanic is good. It's from Wuhan. Yeah, that, that's not a bad... Like, Wuhanic plague is not a bad one. If, if you're putting it in the terms of, like, West Nile virus, Zika, uh, Lyme, Lyme disease, Lyme disease, Spanish flu, Wuhanic plague is not a bad one. That's it. Yeah, so now are you, are you finished offending all of our Asian uh, <laughs> listeners? I think. I don't know. Okay. All right. Dude, man, listen, they could take a joke, right? If we could take the whole think, virus. I don't think so. 
Dude, if we could take a whole virus, bro. <laughs> I don't a- think so. I don't think they could take a joke. I don't, I don't, I don't. People are going to find a way to get offended during this shit. It's, that is another thing that like cracks me up, that people are finding ways to be woke even during a global pandemic, dude. Like, do you literally have nothing else to do with your time? You don't realize what's really going on over here? Um, I don't, I don't, listen, I don't know how, of, how fake offended people are at a time like this because this is a very stressful time. Like, you know, I got homeboys and homegirls whose anxiety is really killing them. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting phone calls crazy where people are, really depressed and you know a lot of people are actually trying to try therapy for the first time now because they're sitting at home and they're alone with their thoughts and this shit is really driving them crazy i think i read two stories this week about two two young women i think one was 19 one was 15 they both killed themselves Whoa. just based on the fear that is being mongered behind the coronavirus you know what i'm saying so i mean you, you yo, a lot of people will, they'll, they'll trick themselves into jumping off a cliff at a time like this because you got to think about it right like you can really convince yourself this is the end of the world if you want to. You could really read the book of Revelations and convince yourself like Armageddon is coming and this is it. And you may not want to be around to see that shit. Hey, bro. We're back. What's back? We're back. Another month. We're back. Americans are tired of this shit. I already feel it. I can't, I don't, I can't speak for Europeans, but I can speak for Americans. We're getting tired of this shit, and we're ready to get back to fucking business. We want to leave the house. Do we have to go back to work? No, we'll work from home. That's fine. But do we want to be able to go out, enjoy the park, enjoy the beach, enjoy fucking things? Yes, slowly, we want to do Slowly, it. Schultz. Slowly. Peel it back. Treat it like an uncircumcised penis. Peel it back. Like, don't just freaking, you just peel it back a little bit. Peel it back. Make sure the skin is all the way down to the bottom of your fucking dick mm-hmm. before you just put it in, bro. Like my feeling is, if you if you're telling us the truth about social distancing, then we should be able to do that, and everything's tr- and everything's fine. If you're not telling us the truth about social distancing, then that's a different discussion. But I you gotta, gotta take t- your word as the government and as scientists. I have to take your word, and if it's six feet, we could work with that. You gotta give them time to figure this shit out. And I think what we're doing as need, we're though. going along every day is learning new shit about the virus. But how much time they need, about. bro? It's like everybody you told they told us, I think, in that press conference that they were going to have 25 million Americans tested in parking lots of Walmarts all around the country. So far, they've done two million. I think well, you, that's um, your president. That's your what? president's fault. That's Walmart. What do you mean? I, listen, I don't know what it is, I, but f- I've, <laughs> I was like, what did Walmart do? Listen, I'll be honest. I've been the most critical of Trump. Uh, during this whole shit. I think he bobbled yeah. his whole shit. He did this pathetically, right? But also Elon Musk said he was going to have all these ventilators and apparently the mayor of uh, the mayor of LA was like, nah, we ain't got no ventilators from him. We don't know what's going on. So everybody's talking this big game and all of a sudden we don't have some shit. And low key, I think the reason why we're not getting tested for it is because people don't want, the more people get tested, the more people have it. And the more people in your country have it, the worse your country looks. Well, there's not enough tests. I think that's on purpose. Because here's okay. the thing, if your country is the one that has the most tests, your country looks the least capable of handling a pandemic. I think Russia, they said seven people died in the whole country from it. And that's just because they ain't testing motherfuckers out there. And if they do come out with a positive test, I think they made it illegal to announce that they had it. So this is a whole PR game going on outside of just people's health. I, I, I would rather be the country that shows the rest of the world how to handle a pandemic correctly. So I think that they should do widespread testing because... Let's be clear, the faster they do widespread testing, the faster we can, you know, get back into society, you know, even though we're going to be doing a lot of social distancing once we get back out there and everybody's going to have on masks and gloves looking like Michael Jackson. But once you start getting widespread testing out that motherfucker until there's a vaccine, you know, that's 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 actually what I think um, will make people feel comfortable. You know what I mean? And then once you once you do widespread testing, then they have that uh, what they do, a con- con- containment tracing. I think they call it so where you can. Am I am I saying you, is that correct, Chris? Can you chime in on this? You won't chime? ring the bell. I promise. You want him to chime? Is it containment <laughs> tracing? I think it's called. Yeah, I mean the the lack of testing to me is the a number one biggest issue right now because if you can't test people, I mean it's elementary. You don't know who has it, and everyone can pour back into the streets in a month or six weeks or whatever it is, but it's just going to go back to zero a couple of weeks after that. So I. I honestly don't understand why we don't have the testing because it seems everybody would want that. I can't, you know, imagine a scenario where somebody wouldn't want that 
outside of what Andrew said, which is you just don't want to confront it. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing about containment tracing is, you know, who has it, you know where the problem areas are and you're able to contain it a little bit better. By the way, ain't no NBA until they get that shit. When they do that, when the NBA comes back, that's exactly what the fuck they're going to be doing. They're going to be testing people. They're going to be quarantining them after games. They'll probably keep them in one area. They'll probably play in like <coughs> one location. I'm, I'm here in Vegas. They'll play in Vegas for the rest of the season. They'll, they'll stay in, I guess, different hotels. And they're going to test like every, I don't know, couple of weeks. Who the fuck knows? And they got those other things where they can check your temperature, make sure you don't got no fever. I guess different ways to, to put us back out in the streets and contain it at the same time. So it's okay if they do that, but we can't go to the park. Fuck out of here, bro. I can't believe we even buying this shit. It makes no Would sense. You feel, listen, you feel you'd feel more comfortable uh, going to the park if you knew that the area you lived in, um, there weren't a lot of cases of coronavirus there. I wouldn't care. And, if it's and the, the reason the reason you would know that is because people have been tested. I not their quarantine. It would be great if people are tested. Don't get me wrong. I'm supportive of testing. I want as much testing as possible. I'm also saying you should be able to go to the park. You should be able to go to a beach. You should be able to do these things. Like there are these absurd rules about quarantining that make absolutely no sense. They just make no like sense. The play, like we can go to a weed shop, but we can't go to the park. Weed is essential. 420 is right around the corner. In fact, I need somebody to do me a little drop off somewhere in Jersey. I need some edibles for 420. <laughs> yeah. Let's do a little drop off. No hand to hand. I'm going to leave the money somewhere and you leave the drugs somewhere. We're going to do this old school, baby. I need some I need some edibles for 420. That is a fact. Well, Talking about a drug that is quite valuable during this quarantine, Charlemagne, Blue Chew is there for you to keep that cock hard during Corona. Now, if you guys don't know what Blue Chew is, I'll explain it to you. Same active ingredient that's in uh, Viagra, Cialis, only it works twice as fast because you're chewing it up. It will give you a night to remember, and most importantly, it will give your loved one, the beautiful woman in your life, a night to remember. Do it for your girl. Have that dick go super saiyan for your girl because she deserves it during this corona. She's been holding you down, man. Maybe she's been in the kitchen. She's been cooking up these meals. She's been making sure you guys are fed. So you need to make sure she sleeps good that night. BlueChew.com. Simple as that. B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. You paid $5 shipping, and then you're going to get it free if you use our promo code IDIOTS. Idiots is the promo code. You pay $5 shipping. You get it for free. That's right. Blue Chew, the better, cheaper, faster choice. We thank you for sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots, Blue Chew, and uh, listeners, we thank you for supporting the Brilliant Idiots with it. I'm telling you, it is the truth, but be careful out there, okay? You want to have something hard. You don't want to hurt someone with it, okay? So be careful with it. You got a weapon. You got an active weapon. Make sure you use it accordingly, Let's get back to the show. You got any church announcements? Um, uh, besides uh, rescheduling shows, you know, rescheduling the special, rescheduling a bunch of other shows, I'm putting it out there. Um, so uh, once I have all those out, we're going to update them. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to get back to work this summer, man. Um, the special I'm rescheduling nah. for fall. So hopefully by November, everything will be good. But yeah, nah. we'll you don't think so? Right. He said that they didn't. Not having concerts until 2021, the fall of 2021. Nah, they said that in like LA. I don't know if I exactly buy that. I really don't think it. I think the second they let people go out, people are going to go back out. And the people that are at risk are not going to go back out. And I think that's yeah, kind of how you, it should you, be. Yeah, but you can't take the risk of having large crowds together quite yet. Why not? Like nobody, Nobody's going to take that risk. Not yet. Not yet, but I think in the next few months, you're going to see. I think people are fed up, man, or they're starting to get fed up. In the next couple of weeks, you're going to see a lot of rebellion, and you're going to see a lot of people like, yo, I'm not staying inside. You had your fucking mind. I think because if you're, if you're a promoter, right, you can't book a, um, a comedy act that can fucking bring 1,000 people, 2,000 people, 3,000 people to an arena because you can't social distance that shit. You know what yeah, I mean? I and, think, and, and, yeah. and if you do, let's say you got a 3,000-seater, they're only going to say, okay, well, you can sell a thousand tickets. So that's that I don't like. And I think that will suck. And I think that will ruin a lot of comedy shows. You could do music like that. But comedy, people need to be together, man. They need to be close. So it's like I want them to be close. And I want them to be safe, obviously. Fuck, check, check temperature, do all that kind of stuff. But I think what's going to happen is in the next couple months, people are going to realize, look, I had it. I'm good. I haven't had it. But I'm willing to... 
go out there and take the risk. Or if I'm an at-risk person, I'm not going to take that risk. I'm staying home and I'm doing that. And and I think that actually life will go back to somewhat somewhat normal because of it. That's that's my opinion. That's that's wishful thinking. Yeah. Um, and I understand why you feel that way because you're a stand-up. 100%. And I'm going to get back you, to it. I'm telling you, Schultz. Yeah. Money's done till about fall 2021. When it comes to the, you better lean into the audio game, lean into the podcast game. I'm lean. Maybe, maybe we get a fucking, we get a coffee table book or something. I don't know. I got, I got some things coming that, that uh, we'll be all right. Let's cook. No, I got good. some, I got some things coming that will be a okay. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. You know. The stand up shit, that shit. That's why I tell all my musical friends, you about, listen, you about to see some rappers. Yeah. You about to see some of your favorite gangster rappers sponsoring Fashion Nova in ways you've never seen. <laughs> really? A lot of cameo. Oh accounts? my God. You about to see some of your favorite gangster rappers showing off them flat tummy T abs, baby. Really? All right. Who goes Bruh, first? Who goes first? There is there's no concert. They said that they said at the minimum, concerts will be back fall 2021. Now That's there's not some true. other doctors. They, the one mayor in L.A. F- presumed that. That wasn't like a fact by the CDC or anything like that. Dr. The Fauci said that, that too. Say Dr. Fauci said, Dr. Fauci said fall of 2021 before we can start gathering in large crowds. Now, you have some doctors who are saying they're fast tracking a vaccine, right? I think it's like 70 different trials going on right now with mm-hmm. 70 different vaccines. If they get a vaccine, I, I think I even saw one doctor say they might even have an emergency vaccine by the fall. If something like that happens, back in business, baby. Once the vaccine is there, you'll start seeing the concerts and shit come back. Yeah. Until then, bruh, I'm telling you, Fashion Nova is going to be getting some of your favorite celebrities for the low. <laughs> Watch. Watch. Fashion Nova used to be giving people equity and shit. Nah, nah. Those days are over, baby. Uh-uh. $500. You know, post it. That's it. Five, you, five, you want this 500 You want this 1000 I'm serious. That you you going to see a lot of celebrities with OnlyFans pages. That's the next wave. <laughs> right. You're gonna see a lot of celebrities with OnlyFans pages. It's gonna be it's about to be real. You're about to really see who've been saving their motherfucking money and who've been playing. Who do you with think that is first? Said, who do you think is huh? first? Who do you think is first? I'm already seeing some people. Who? I'm not gonna say. Come on, I'm already, yo. Nah, I'm not gonna say it, but I'm already seeing some people, man. I'm already seeing some people and I'm slightly disappointed. Who? I'm, not gonna I'm not gonna say. I'm not Do gonna I know him? Yeah, you know, Friends? you probably know them. If you pay attention, you definitely know them. And then, listen, and by the way, I'm not even going to say that they're doing it because of these reasons, because they probably were always doing it. I just never noticed. You know what I'm saying? And, it's, and and when you think about it, if you're a comedian or a celebrity, when you're when you're on your page, you're promoting shit that you're doing. So you might promote your show or you might promote your comedy show. So once you slip in that flat tummy T ad, you don't notice. But shit been dry the past few weeks. There ain't no fucking show. So now them flat tummy T ads is just like... <laughs> they're a little bit more noticeable now yeah. you know what i'm saying so yeah, yeah I, i'm it's, it's gonna be bad the next few few weeks man and, and i want to say I got, I got a lot of people that i know that are telling me they received the, these stimulus checks and i'm confused about that because in order to get that check you need to be making in 2018 less than seventy thousand or something like that eighty thousand. yep yep so it's a little weird, bro. So has there <laughs> been some capping on the internet, yes, if you will? I would, def- I would definitely call that capping. That is definitely capping. But yo, God bless him. You know, I'm not knock- I'm not knocking you. I'm just saying, I'm like, how the fuck? I'm just really wondering, how the fuck you get a stimulus check? That's all. Because like you said, in order to get a stimulus check, you got to make what, under 90000 a year or something like that? Something, yeah. Huh. You thought people were doing better than what they were. I'm not here to judge. I'm just happy that I'm blessed. Thank you, God. Now, let's get into some shit you're not going to care about next week. Oh, um, now, Charlamagne, Alex brought up an interesting point. What if you had your own business and you kind of manipulated the business to make it look like it wasn't profitable? So you didn't make any money yourself, but um, you made money through the business. So you as an employee maybe didn't get paid out by the business, but you paid everything in your life through the maybe. business. Maybe, maybe. I mean, listen, I, I would, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and act like, um, you know, I, I wouldn't apply for PPP. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I have small businesses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to fire my employees. I don't have a lot of employees, but, you know, I want to be I want my employees to be taken care of. If, I, I think that if there's any type of resources like that available from the government, take advantage of them and don't let nobody shame you for it. Like, Yo, like those are by the way, those are our taxpayer dollars, motherfuckers. 
Like all they're doing is giving us back what we give the fucking FICA, whoever that is. I thought it was a fucking soccer league for years, <laughs> but it's not. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, yeah, I read a, I read something that said American citizens paid $1.7 trillion in taxes in 2018. Wow. Where the fuck is this money going? Wow. That right there, you could take care of you could take care of motherfuckers annually with that kind of money. Mm. You could do universal basic income and all kind of shit with that kind of money. Mm. There's no reason for a fucking public school anywhere to be fucked up when you got a country generating $1.7 million in taxes from its citizens. Mm. Everybody should have access to some type of uh, affordable health care, even free health care. If you're making that kind of money annually from taxes, yeah, where the fuck is the $1.7 trillion going? A lot you know of it's going to the fucking military. No, it's not just military. A lot of that's to go pay off debt. Who's dead? So the way that the government creates money is it sells bonds, so these treasury bills. And the the way a treasury bill or a bond functions is you buy it for $100, then the government says to you, I'll pay you back $110 at a later date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know so, yeah. so that how is it going to pay it back? The government is going to generate revenue through taxation and then pay the money back. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I'm no financial advisor. I can't Me neither. explain how this shit works, but I do know when I, prices I, I know are what low. you're talking about, though. Yeah, it's like shit goes up over time. Prices are low. Get in. I mean, that's what I mean. If you want to look at like now I'm like looking at all these I'm just bored. So I'm looking at all these conspiracy theories and that kind of shit. But it's like when you look at like throughout time, how the people who run the banking establishments around the world have made money. They've taken advantage of times like this. Like there's been economic depressions. They've called. Sometimes the bankers have leaned into the depressions where they've called in the money. So there's not a lot of liquidity in the market. And then you can't take out a loan to pay your bills. So what you have to do, you have to let the gov the, the bank seize your property, right? So the bank's like, no, nah, I'm not going to give you a loan so you could pay for shit, but you need to pay back your loan. And then you're like, well, all I got is my farm. And they're like, all right, we'll take that, but we'll take it for pennies on the dollar. And that's how they get richer, man. It's, bro, this this whole, the more I research this shit, the whole banking game is so crazy, bro. Do you know what fractional reserve banking is? No, but I have a financial advisor who does. Yo, this is the most genius shit ever. This is how money works. I never realized this, right? A bank only needs to have 10% of the total value in the actual bank and physical money. So let's say Charlemagne the God, right? You give that bank a million dollars, right? That bank only needs to keep $100,000 of your money in the bank. It could take the other $900,000 that you gave them and lend it out to other people. And lend it out to other people. Yeah, yeah, interest, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? But what's genius about this is that you have one million, right? It lends out 900,000, right? That 900,000 goes out into the world. Right. Let's say somebody took that nine hundred thousand, right? That you lent it to them, and they don't want to buy, and they and and uh and they buy a house from somebody for nine hundred thousand, right? Right. I'm listening. So that person that got paid nine hundred thousand dollars for the house, let's say they take that money and they put it back in the same bank where you are, right? Now the bank has another 900000 that they can lend 90% of. Yeah, that's why your financial advisor will tell you. But wait, like but, wait but wait, but wait, but wait, but wait. There's now in that bank $1.9 million. But there isn't. There's only the $1 million that you gave them. They just made up another 900000 I don't know if Do that's see what's going how on? it works. That's how it works. Said. It's crazy. I Think about it, right? You you put a million in a bank, right? Yeah. The bank lends out nine hundred thousand dollars to to Chris Moreau. Chris Moreau buys my house for nine hundred thousand dollars. I have nine hundred thousand. I put it back in a bank. That bank can lend out eight hundred nine eight hundred and ten thousand dollars now. It just okay. It, I, 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 listen, I know I know it's something like that. That's why your financial advisor will tell you. They just like if you just got money, money sitting in the bank, that you all you're doing is helping other. All you're doing is helping other people. Get loans. Of course, but, but what yeah. I'm saying is this is how money just gets invented out of nowhere. Out of thin air, you're just inventing money because we allow people to lend money that they don't have. And if you can lend money that you don't technically have, then that's free money that comes out of nowhere. But don't technically they have it though? This is what this is how it all starts. They don't technically have it because they only have to keep 100,000 100, of your money in. 
So now that 900,000 is just going anywhere it wants. And if somebody else wants to take that 900,000 and put it back in the bank, they only got to keep 90,000 of it in the bank. Well, listen, uh, I'm not sure if that's how that works, but this, I can't say Schultz is this wrong. This is how it started. Know. This is how it started, right? Maybe this will be like the apps, the idiot section or whatever, but like this is how it started. So back in the day, you know how shit used to be in gold, right? Yes. So what happens is the goldsmiths would take the gold that you give them, melt it down, put it in bars. And then you didn't want to carry around fucking gold bars all day. So the goldsmiths would, this is in England, they'd write you a note that basically was like, yo, carry this piece of like paper around and it will basically equate to the gold you got right there. So if you need to pay for something, pay for it in the paper so you don't got to carry the gold, right? The yeah. goldsmith figured out that nobody would ever ask for all their, all their gold. So what they started doing is writing out notes to people without there being any gold backed for the note. I see what you're saying. And then charging interest on that note. So they're charging interest on money that ain't even there. You know, that's what that's what uh, Qaddafi was doing. What was he doing? Hold on, Qaddafi. Hold on, I want to read this real quick because I don't want to misquote this. I don't want to get too idiot. Just in case. There's someone that's way more financially savvy that can explain fractional reserve banking than me. I'm not doing a good job explaining it because... Partially because it really isn't explainable. It's absolutely absurd, but that's how our economy works. Yeah, G Gaddafi was about to challenge monetary imperialism because he had a bunch of gold. Right. Like he, he, had, he, had, he had a big reserve of gold, and I think he was uh, he wanted to create a one-world Or an African currency. currency. Yeah. Yep. He wanted to create a one-world one currency. Hey, bro, anybody that's ever challenged currency any person in power that's challenged currency has been killed or removed from power can't fuck with the church's money hey bro hey bro you want to know something <laughs> ain't got nothing to do with the church but you want to know something oh yeah that's what it was they, remember, they, remember they said that uh, hillary clinton's emails i don't know if this is true but they said revealed that nato killed Gaddafi to stop the libyan creation of gold-backed currency Every, anybody, if you go out there and Google, Google Gaddafi and gold, you can do your own research. Hey, here's another one you could Google. You know how our money's green now? Yeah. You know who, uh, you, it, it comes from uh, the greenback. And you know who made the greenback to finance the Civil War? Mexican leprechauns. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Abraham Lincoln what? printed the greenback to finance the Civil War. Because bankers really? wanted to charge him 25 to 36% on money that he wanted to take out for the war efforts. So he printed his own money, the greenbacks. What happened, what happened to Abraham Lincoln? He got shot. He did, didn't he? Yeah, he blew his fucking brains out. By some actor that really wanted slavery? An actor. What the fuck is an actor so interested in slavery for? Do you have slaves so you can, what, read lines with them? I mean, it depends. Come on, bro. I mean, just because just you're, you're an actor don't mean that you're not racist. No, no. He was racist. Sure, everybody yeah, yeah. back in the day was racist. But I'm saying he's not the one who needs slavery, who's willing to shoot and kill for slavery. Well, I think you're thinking about actors from this. You're thinking financially about what an actor would be making now. Back then, acting probably wasn't shit. No, I'm talking about you know his then? job. Like, why would his job in, need slaves? Like, if you're an actor... Who's going to get you your water, bro? Who's going to fucking you get you your You're going to have a whole food? slave to get water, bro? What you about when your feet hurt after you've been on fucking dog? stage all day? <laughs> Say again? What about when your feet hurt after you've been on stage all day? That's why you have a wife. Why wouldn't you want to? Listen, let's, 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 all jokes aside. There's <laughs> a million reasons why an actor would want a slave. Okay? <laughs> By the way, most personal assistants are indentured servants. <laughs> oh, <geez>. All right? <laughs> <laughs> like let's just like come on, guys. Most personal assistants for actors and actresses are indentured servants. And by the way, it's a it's a personal assistant out there right now listening to me, who feels like she's in a relationship with her slave master, or in a relationship with his slave master. Right? Okay, we've we've heard the horror stories of these different actors and actresses who make you get them a bowl of red M and M's and throw shit at you when you ain't doing shit right. And on, it's Yo. not slavery. I well, learned it's a form of indentured servitude. I learned why the uh, the actors do the Eminem shit. Why? It's to make sure that the people at the venues are reading their writer. They don't really care about the color Smart. of the Eminems. Smart. But if you put some Smart. weird shit in there, then you know Smart. they got all the other shit right. You know that they're paying attention to detail. 
Exactly. So then you don't have to like, yeah, now you don't have to eat your salad and then has sardines in there. You're allergic to sardines. You end up fucking dying. That's fucking smart. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, Listen, let's do, let's do some asking idiots. Well, let's I pay, do let's pay one more bill and then we'll do ask idiots. Okay. Guys, turn your dream into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and more, Squarespace is the tool for you. With beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online and analytics help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever buying domains simple you'll get the help you need with squarespace's 24 7 award-winning customer support now is the time to get your business ready to go for when this pandemic is over make sure that you have a website without a website you do not have a real business so do all of your problem solving do all of your creative do all of your building get your platform ready set to go for free mind you okay if you use the uh, code idiot. So you go to squarespace.com slash idiot. You get a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch it, use the offer code idiot to get 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. Uh, squarespace.com slash idiot offer code idiot. Now. All right, let's do some. Um, ask a fucking idiot. Taylor, did you send me ask an idiot? Yeah, I just scroll all the way down. You gotta scroll all the way down. Taylor over there, lonely and sad, bro. Taylor, yeah, she really through. is sad, man. Taylor, what's wrong? I thought she had I a think boyfriend. Her dude broke up with her. First of all, we're still together. Okay, what else? And then I'm just depressed about the economy. It's just sad. All right, uh, for Angelo <laughs> Five Car Phone, oh, that's Angelo. Angelo. Angelo got a good question for asking. You got a good question for asking, idiot. What is it? Are you gonna still uh, keep me employed? Is that the question? Damn, that is a good question. <laughs> I haven't used them. <laughs> I don't know if you still have a job, Angelo. We'll see. Once this is all over, I don't know. Um, now, Angelo did do a dope video. He made a dope video because, you know, he's, he's been around me so much that, you know, he always has like B-roll and shit. Yeah. And he just has this whole fucking plethora of me just shaking everybody's hands because, you know, I'm the type of person that walks in the room. And shakes everybody's hand, speaks yep. to everybody. So he just put this whole video together of me just shaking everybody's hand. And I'm sitting there looking like, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that again, yo. Seriously. You will. I can't wait to, to be honest with you. I can't wait either. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I want to dap motherfuckers up. Let's go, me bro. Too. Let's get back to it. Fuck we doing? <laughs> Ask an idiot. Angelo says, which basketball player today would have the same public shock reaction as Magic Johnson if they announced they had HIV? Wait, say that again. Which basketball player today would have the same public shock reaction as Magic Johnson if they announced they had HIV? Um, I don't know. I don't think it's shocking anymore. I think the nah, I shock think so for Magic Johnson was everybody thought it was a gay flu. And then they, they're <laughs> like, how did you get the gay flu if you're not gay? No, that is true. I remember when that happened, everybody immediately went to Magic's gay um, and they started talking about when he used to kiss Isaiah on the lips. Yeah. You know, I, I, I was even watching straight out of Compton the other day. And like, even when Easy E's character, when Jason Mitchell, who played, I say Easy E's character, when Jason Mitchell, who played Easy E, you know, when they told him he had, um, HIV AIDS, that's the first thing came out of his mouth. It's like, I ain't gay. I'm gay. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a, that was a thing during that era. You know what so I mean? I don't so, think yes. it would be a surprise. I really don't now, think the only way it would be a shock is if it was like a player who was a superstar who was married, you know what I'm saying? Because then everybody would be like, how the fuck did he get, you know what I mean? But you always assume they cheat on their wives, so it's like nothing Nothing is that shocking. Maybe raw dogging is a little crazy. Maybe Steph Curry would be the most shocking if he had it. But then oh he, again, God. he's in San Francisco. He's the closest to Wuhan of AIDS. Jesus Christ. Um, Mega Stosin asking it, uh, what's the one thing you missed doing before Corona? That you won't be doing after Corona. Oh. Um. Hmm. It's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm. I plan on doing absolutely everything after Corona that I did before. Absolutely everything. Handshakes, meet and greets after the show, all that. Yes, let's go. 
I was thinking about meetings. Um, don't get me wrong. I still love having meetings. I still love, you know, pulling up in somebody's conference room and chopping the shit. But um, I do miss it. Like, you know, you miss having to travel to L.A., you know, to go have these great meetings or whatever, whatever. But um, I don't know if I ever have to do that ever again because of the Zoom shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is there a reason? Because I'm the type of I'm, I'm the type that would get on a plane and fly to L.A. for a meeting and then fly right back. Fly, go to LA for an hour meeting and fly right back. I'm I, I don't know if I ever have to do that ever again. Yeah. Because of this Zoom shit. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you would fly to LA for a meeting is kind of crazy. Just a meeting? Nothing else? You weren't like filming something? Or? Nah, I mean, I do that too, but sometimes I, I go just for a meeting. Like, you know, especially depending on who the meeting is with. That's and, a, and a lot of, the and a lot of, of meetings, times those have become like yeah. some of my biggest opportunities. You know what I mean? Like I've been planting a lot of seeds over the years that people will see the fruit from, um, you know, over the next year or so, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's just like, yeah, like I, I, you take those, you take those meetings and they're stressful in there, hard to do and it, it wears and tears on you, but it's absolutely worth it. I just don't know if I would ever have to do that again. So I'm, I, this is a good question because it's something that I miss, you know, but I don't know if I would necessarily do it after Corona because I don't see the need other right. than the feel, the energy of the room. That's about it. Yeah. Feeling you, the energy. You really need energy? Nice. It is nice, but I hear you. I hear what you're saying. It's a long trip to go just for a meeting, but you're probably meeting people that you want to meet in person. So it's different, you know? Oh, um, this is another good asking idiot. A uh, like her, like, like her hoist said, how did Charlemagne get his girl back back in the day when he used to be cheating? I'm going through it. That's a very good question. Um, but you can't compare your situation to mine because me and my now wife, we were together very young. You know what I'm saying? We were together as kids since high school. So we grew together. We evolved together. You know, we didn't really you know, how, know how to be in relationships with each other. And then, you know, you, 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 she went off to college. Forget about it. You know what I'm saying? She's still going to live her life in college. I wasn't in school. I wasn't there every day. Like, you're going to go through these different experiences. Everybody's going to go through their whole phase at different times. So I'm not necessarily the best example, but I do say, um, you know, since I am a man who's cheated when he was married, I just think that the best apology is change behavior. And I think the same way your girl has a sixth sense and she knows when you are cheating, she also knows when you're not cheating. You know what I'm saying? So I just think the best apology is change behavior, man. That's it. Simple as that. That makes sense, man. Yeah. That's cool that she's past it. I mean, or is she past it? Is she forgiving you? Have you guys? Um, you guys I think trust? I think so. Only because I don't. I, I, I'm clean, bro. I'm four years clean. Yeah, I ain't cheated since October of 2016. I'll be matter of fact, I'll be four years this year. I get a fucking coin this year. <laughs> yeah, four years. How bad was that last piece of pussy, bro? It wasn't bad at all. <laughs> 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 it has nothing to do with it being bad. You know what I'm saying? But is it worth ruining my fucking marriage over? It you know wasn't. By the way, you know what's so crazy, man? Once, when, when, like, that's why everybody needs to read Way of the Superior, man. It's a great book. And, you know, it talks about uh, sacred masculine and divine feminine. It's a book that Lauren London uh, recommended to Dipsy Hustle. And you know, Lauren um, also recommended it to me as well. And me and Dipsy actually had a discussion about it on his last interview with the breakfast club. And, you know, it just talks about how, you know, you got to balance that sacred masculine and divine feminine in you. But more importantly, it talks about when you commit yourself to one person, when you commit yourself to one individual and like you're not doing the cheating and you're really into this person and you know, the love making and just the way y'all connect on an emotional, spiritual, physical level is so intense that it makes you wonder why you were ever, Sleeping with anybody else. Sounds pretty Straight gay, up. bro. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what you say? <laughs> I said, I said, sounds pretty gay, bro. I'm just saying, man. Maybe that's why gay people, maybe that's why the gay sex is so good. <laughs> bro. Maybe they connect in a different way. Maybe they, because think about it, right? Based on everything you've said, this podcast that was highly offensive to the gay community. Whoa, whoa, right? whoa, 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 bro. <laughs> they, whoa, they, they, bro. They, they, Why are you throwing me under the bus? I'm just saying they can't jump around from partner to partner. So maybe they really focus so intensely 
on their significant other that they connect on a different level. They connect emotionally, spiritually. Did you say gay guys don't jump around from partner to partner? I don't know. I can't speak for gay. Oh, guys. child, would, you have so much to learn. It's not <laughs> old child. It's, it's sis. Oh, please. sis. All right. Sis. <laughs> sis. Bro, sis, are you kidding me, listen. Dog? Dude, there's a thing in gay culture called the glory hole. Have you heard of this? Where there's just a no. hole in a door and you stick your dick in and then someone on the other side is like, yes, a dick. And they just start sucking it. That's that's how powerful gay sex drive is. Or maybe male sex drive is when you just wouldn't have you love to have a wouldn't you love to have a significant other like that? Wait, what? Wouldn't you love to have a significant other? No, it's other not that your significant other. Excited? It's just some random dude. But you do wouldn't you want bar. somebody to be that super excited over your penis? I just open the door and then get my dick sucked by my significant other. The fun part about the glory hole, I guess, is you don't know who's sucking it. But think about the person that's sucking it. The person that's sucking it has to really love dick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Fuck. Wouldn't you want somebody to love your penis in that way, Shows? Are you trying to make me gay? <laughs> 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 what's happening over here bro <laughs> are you in here soliciting my dick bro this is how that flu got passed around bro calm down and shut up that's <laughs> <laughs> so crazy jesus man all right let's do one more asking they didn't get the fuck out of here. oh um, shit wow i don't know if this is true though t money sig says how do y'all feel that this kind of natural disaster didn't bring people closer and are we fucked when the aliens come well i mean it didn't bring people closer because we literally have to distance ourselves from one another that's part of it uh and are we you don't think it digitally you don't think it digitally made us closer i know for a fact bro i'm I, i'm facetiming way more than i ever have in my life i'm zooming way more than i ever have in my life I'm just bored I'm doing ig live way more than i ever had in my life you're just bored bro you're just bored. You got nothing to do. So you're like, fucking, let me distract myself. Like everybody's hitting me. Everybody's like, yo, come on my IG live. Everybody got an IG live talk show. Yeah. Like everybody doing something like everybody wants IG live action. They're like, yo, come, come do this. Come well, do that. Like that's because we're craving live interaction. We want to do something together. Like that's why I wish they had that MMA fight because it was going to be something we could all experience together at the same time. It was live. That shit is so valuable, man. We just want to experience something with each other. They got to figure that shit out. That's why Tory Lane's live is popping, bro. It's like, give us a live moment we could all share. Let's go. True. You know? True. You're absolutely right. Anyway, bro. I think that's it, right? I think that's it, man. You be good. I think we did it. Should we do a, a hairline check or no? You want it? I got a lot of hair, bro. Let me see it. Because I saw it when you were lifting the, the, the what's it called? A little bit. Let me see. Yo. A lot Yo. Of hair. My, hairline, my hairline ain't that bad. Oh shit, Officer Winslow. <laughs> Let me see that hairline, Officer Winslow. Let me see that. Oh, Officer Winslow. Let me see it, bro. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see it again. No, 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 no. Let me no, get a little no, sneak no. peek. I feel like I'm asking for a titty pick. Let me get, no. <laughs> just show me a little something. <laughs> no. I want to say to, uh, yes, thank you for listening. Um, the views of Andrew Schultz are Andrew Schultz's views. Man, um, <laughs> will you stop, bro? What type of friend are you, bro? The type of friend that knows when to move out of the way, and I'm telling you to move, too. But why are you throwing me under the booty bus, bro? Like, you don't got to do this, bro. <laughs> the booty bus. You really throw the me booty under bus. the booty the bus. The funniest shit in the world. The funniest shit in the world is the text you get after this podcast when Chris is like, all right, I think y'all should take out uh, from 1256 to 1987 <laughs> <laughs> to 1903. <laughs> okay, all references to China just should be scrubbed. Just scrubbed. Dude, so, that's right. He works for the government, bro. Listen, um, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.